Here we have a Mercedes-Benz key fob that came in for repair. This one is coming from the Bahamas. It came express. And the customer actually sent us an email about this fob and he also sent a WhatsApp text message. I do not usually respond to WhatsApp text messages because we get a lot of messages daily and those messages are not tracked. But every once in a while, I'll click on a few of them and respond. Look at how many messages we have. I cannot realistically respond to all those messages. I cannot. So sometimes I pick messages at random and it so happens the message I clicked on is the same person who sent us an email inquiring about his key fob. Customer sent what looks like two donor motherboards for the same key fob and he sent the key fob that he wants fixed, which is this one right here. And the reason I know this is because the customer said the fob does not light up when you press the buttons and it also came inside the case. Let's go ahead and try the fob. Before we do so, we're gonna test the batteries that came with the fob to make sure the batteries are good. We want to see about six volts and we are reading 6.5 volts. So the batteries are good. If we test the customer's board, I have the battery making a connection with the board from the back and if I press on the button, we do not see a blinking red light. Lock and panic. The light is not coming on. If we try one of the donor boards, the customer mailed and the customer mailed two donor boards. If we put this one here and we click on the button, we do see the red blink. I'm not sure if you can see it on a 60 frame per second refresh rate, but let me do it more than few times. Okay, I see a red light. And if we click, not click, if we test the second donor board, we have a blinking light also. We have a red blinking LED also. So we know the customer's fob is non-functional. It's not working. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on. Why is that fob not blinking. Now look at this, right off the bat, we see corrosion. Right here. We have more corrosion here, more corrosion here. I mean, the customer lives in the Bahamas, so... What did you expect? We have corrosion here, corrosion here. Possibly this one here. The coil looks good. We have more corrosion here. Some more here. And I do not see any corroded traces. The lines look clean, all of them. The connection between this and this is there. Same here. Same here, same here. So I think our problem Maybe that we need to clean the corrosion and maybe replace a couple of components. We can start by using our cleaning brush. The cleaning brush has one semi-soft brush on one side and a fine steel brush on this side. I do not need to use the fine steel brush right now. This will do but on stubborn areas, I usually use the fine steel brush. I mean, this cap is totally gone. Look at this. One end of the cap evaporated to the ninth dimension. That brush is our best seller since maybe two years ago. And I put that silver dot on here so I can differentiate this board from the others. And I just wiped it with alcohol. Always happens. 
All right, we do not need to do any more cleaning. And I continue to clean. What's the first thing that we should do? I think we're gonna replace this capacitor. We're going to replace this capacitor, this one here. And anything else, I do not even need to measure those capacitors, if they are faulty or not. They look bad. And nothing else needs to be changed. Maybe we can also replace this one here. Here, let's remove it. And let's remove this one. And why not remove this one also, even though it may be good. We're going to give the customer full service. We do not do Mickey Mouse jobs here. Every device is handled with care. So we're going to start with this one. Remove it from the donor board. And then we're going to solder it on the customer's board. Right over here. And now we're going to go for the second one, which is this one here. And we're going to solder it right over here. And now we're going to go for the third one. And we're going to solder it right over here. And if we're lucky, the fob is fixed. If we are lucky. But it's almost always never that easy. Let's see, are we feeling lucky? <laughs> One way to find that. And of course not. Of course not. I told you, it's never that easy. No light. So, let's go back. And see what else could be the problem. Right now, I just want to inspect component by component. Looks good. Just based on visual inspection. Everything is looking good on this side. And I'm also looking at traces, if we have any broken traces anywhere. Nothing. So what else should we check? I mean, honestly, everything is looking good. And right now I'm thinking, is it possible that the crystal is what's causing the problem? Because the fob is totally dead. 0 0.6. And if we go back here, from here to here, 0 0.7. So it's the same. No difference. Let's measure from here to here on the customer's board. And what readings do we get? 0 0.9 mega ohms. And on a donor board, what do we get? Around 1 mega ohm. So the crystal is likely not the problem. And if we measure this 0 ohm resistor, we're good. We're good. 
We're good here. What is causing the problem? Now, we did find some corrosion here on this component, so is it possible that this component is the problem? Why don't we measure in diode mode? Let's go to diode mode. Zero point six, nothing, and zero point three. And if we grab a donor board, nothing, zero point six, and zero point three. No problems here. Zero point three, and on the customer's board. Zero point three. Of course, because this cap is connected with this pin. Let's measure this one. Nothing. Nothing. And 0 0.5. And if we look at the donor board. Nothing. Nothing. And 0 0.5. 0 0.3. 0 0.3. and ground. Zero point three, zero point three, and we have ground. So far so good. Zero point three. And now the donor board So, what is the problem? All those components are measuring good. This one, this one, this one, this one. All the traces. Zero point three, zero point nine, zero point three, and zero point six. No issues. That's a very weird problem. Okay, I just wanted to figure out what the problem was with this fob, but it looks like it's gonna be hard to find out what's wrong with the fob. So let's take the other route where we're gonna transfer those components back on the donor board and then we're going to transfer the NEC chip from one board to another. I could have done this from the beginning but I just wanted to figure out what's wrong with this board. I thought it would be more fun for the viewers but if this board want to play games then the board can play games by itself. I'm going to let the board play games by itself. If I had more time I would investigate further but not today. We're going to put the other cap back. And finally, we're going to put this one back. Let's put a dot on the customer's NEC chip. The NEC chip is what contains the firmware or the programming for the vehicle. So that's the chip that we're going to transfer. We're going to start by removing the donor NEC chip so we can replace it with the customer's NEC chip. And we'll try again. Apply some flux. Now we're going to grab the customer's NEC chip. 
and I have it labeled with that silver dot. Let's go back to the donor board. And that's the wrong direction. It should be like that. Just like that. And we're all good. All the pins should be solid. Let's make it super solid. And do the same thing here. Let's see. Are we going to get a light? We should, unless the NEC chip itself is bad. And we do have a light. Look at this. Press the button, great. Press the button, great. Press the button, the fob is working. Let's go ahead and use our fob tester. And the tester should read 314.9 frequency. And the battery is dead on this one. But look at this, it's reading 314.9. And you can't see anything, okay? The battery looks low because usually the digits are brighter and now they are a bit dim. But if I press on the button, yes, 314, 314.9. If I press on the second button, the trunk one, 314.9, lock, 314.9 and finally the panic button 314.9 let's turn the fume extractor off and that's it the fob is fixed we're gonna invoice and mail this back to the customer tomorrow now the customer mailed this fob over as an expedited service so we got the fob in today and we finished the fob today so assuming the customer pays overnight we're gonna ship this fob tomorrow and we're gonna end the video right here i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.